Hey, how's it going, guys? Um, today I want to talk about uh, Malthael for a little bit. He's a character that I've played about 200, 225 matches uh, this season. Um, I've done pretty, uh, pretty well with him, actually. Um, I've gained about 1,000 MMR since December. And it's primarily because of um, some changes that were made in the in the early December balance patch that changed um, the amount of XP that you gain from capturing mercenaries by 100%. So I figured that this would be kind of the time in the game's life when players would understand how important it was to take uh, mercs. Um, that has not been my experience in game. I feel like no matter what level of play you're playing at, people still largely ignore mercs until um, until basically there's nothing else to do on the map. You know, like an objective's finished, uh, people people have died on both sides, and they kind of retreat and take camps. Um, what I'm going to show you is that you can actually get um, a significant amount of XP out of the map along with uh, map pressure uh, by taking mercs essentially on cooldown. Um, so and what you're going to see is basically, like, if you do this correctly, um, there's kind of a fourth lane, if you, you could think of it that way, where um, the other team is only soaking three lanes, and you're kind of soaking four. And you're, you're going to kind of see what that looks like as we do this. Um, so at 60 seconds, um, mercenaries spawn on the map. This is pretty standard. So, like, if Dahaka is paying attention in this top lane... Uh, he'll notice, like, I'm gone, but he's going to know exactly where I am, right? Everyone knows, like, I'm going to take this camp in 60 seconds. Um, Orfea or Hanzo should be taking their bottom camp. You can see that's not that's not happening. Um, that's despite, this is this is a, a Masters and Grandmaster level game. There's people in this game that are, uh, you know, high diamond Masters, even Grandmasters here. So, um, uh, ordinarily, what would happen now is I would rotate back in and, and relieve the Meroden. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate into their hard camp. And this is this is risky, but it's gonna work because I'm keeping an eye on middle lane. I'm I'm keeping an eye on everyone on the map, and I'm just making sure I know where they are. I'm also telling my team to continue to make pressure middle, like to continue to engage them. Like don't die, but just continue to engage them so they're not looking, they're not thinking, okay, cool, we're done here, let's go take a camp. And as long as that's the case, you can get away with a lot of stuff. So it's not really. Um, the pressure from this camp that's valuable, let's say, it's more of the XP. So um, if you were watching the XP numbers, I got 280 XP for the first camp and 450 from the second one. Uh, if you, so let's let's pause the game for a second and look at this. Um, that's about 730 XP uh, from the two camps, and I have 450 XP. So if you add those together, it's like whatever, it's 11 something, 1200 experience. That puts me... Um, up up next to the Orphea, right? Up next to the Dahaka, and they've done nothing but sit in lane the entire time. Uh, so, again, like, this is... It, it's it, it's hard, right, because the XP isn't going to show... It isn't, isn't going to show you the amount of XP that I gained from the Mercs. And ordinarily, you can mouse over these totals in the game, and it will tell you. But for some reason, in replay, you can't do that. Um, so we're just going to keep an eye. Uh, I've got kind of a running track of the amount of experience that I gained through the game, and we'll add it up at the end, and we'll kind of see where we are. But as you can see, um, the important part is I'm staying competitive with their solo laners, and I'm not even in a lane. You can take this camp um, safer, but I know when the objective is going to spawn, and I know... Um, that I'm just going to back as soon as it's over. So I don't, I'm not really worried about taking it safely. I just want to take it quickly. Um, the same thing was, was kind of over here when I did the when I did their Bruiser Camp earlier. Uh, I could have done it safer and saved some hit points, but I knew I was going to back out. Um, and second, I knew I was going to back out. And second, uh, I really am just going for speed. Like, I can do it safer, but it maybe cost me a few seconds. But if they decide to rotate on me, like if they if they go for it, then I'm dead either way. So I would rather get it done faster, personally. Yep, so at this point, we're about half level ahead. Um, and there's nothing really else to take on the map. So right now, we're just kind of waiting, uh, going back to playing a more traditional game where we're just going to, you know, sort of counter-soak people. Mm -hmm. 
Malfela versus Dahaka is kind of a neat solo lane because, um, like, I can't really kill him if he decides to, you know, he has a lot of defensive abilities. But he also really can't threaten me either. Like, he can actually out-sustain me. Just because Malfael doesn't have mana issues, but he does, you know, it's a concern over time. So you can see that he had to burn some of his essence, and he really got nothing out of it. Um, we are deciding as a team at this point to let this tribute go, just let them have it. Um, I'm going to take this camp while we do it. We're just kind of low on resources, we, just, we decided that was the best thing to do. I could be doing a better job of not getting hit by these, uh, by these uh, mercenaries, by the way. Okay, so again, like there's 292 experience from that. Like, we're we're doing a pretty good job of of staying up on experience. And as you can see, like, what does it translate into? It basically translates into almost a half level of XP gain. So I can see that Diablo is going to want to join in on this. So I just want to throw shade and knock him off his mount. So just to kind of delay him going up there and maybe buy my team some time. But then I'm going to go right back to soaking. Gather tribute or face my curse. The choice is simple. So neither team at this point has their mage, right? Orfea is bottom, Kael'thas is bottom. So if we decide to fight... Um, we won't be, we won't have those, but I do a pretty significant amount of damage, and actually so does Imperius, so we should be fine no matter what happens, and we're also, it looks like we're going to hit 10 ahead of them. I get a little ballsy and go up to soak that out, uh, just knowing that, that they'll probably collapse on me, but we can probably use that as a, to our advantage. Okay, so we do hit 10 first, which is going to basically force them to back off. I don't think they do back off, though. I think they choose to fight into this knowing that, you know, they'll get 10 here in a second, and they'll be able to uh, to sort of fight back, but it, it goes sideways for them real fast. So the neat thing about Malthael, again, is, like, you get last rights, and it just, as soon as you have it off cooldown, just go kill somebody. Uh, you, can, you can kill someone as soon as they're below, like, what, 33%? So you can you can run around, you can get experience, you can take camps, you can do all these things, and then show up just long enough to make it a 4v5, and then go right back to what you were doing. Okay, there's another 504 experience. I would like to see somebody taking out that. There's a big wave of XP middle that I would like to get, but it's just not going to happen right now. So we bought a lot of time with those mercs, so it's it's actually still pushing in, and they're just going to have to they're going to have to deal with it. <clears throat> we lose the cane, but we got to split them up pretty hard and take their their healer out in the back. Basically, with Die Alone and Cold Hand, some, they can't get away from you. If you isolate somebody, they're dead. So we have Last Rites back off cooldown now. We're going to kill the Hanzo and then just pressure out everybody else. I am out of mana, though, so just kind of get one last hit or two in here and then go back to channel the objective. Let your enemies know my wrath. So I make, uh, you know, may maybe a questionable call here, right? Like, I come up, I get the experience, and then I leave, right? Mount Thale doesn't do a tremendous amount of siege damage. Like, I'm not going to be up there taking that fort any faster than the minions would take it by itself. 
So Murden's going to come switch me out. And I'm just going to go ahead and take camps. Like, I know it seems silly to take camps, like, during um, a curse. You know, it's like, oh, you're, you're wasting, you're wasting uh, free XP, basically. And maybe we are. Um, it was just, that's the call that was made. Uh, we could have maybe had someone middle, though. I think that is probably the biggest misplay that we had. But we are pushing down that fort on bottom. And we're two levels up and a talent here at this point. So we're going to go ahead and keep rotating. Uh, we'll take out the night camps down here. So by the time this objective is finished, uh, there's going to continue to be a lot of pressure on the map. Okay, there's another 522 experience. Like I've, I've got, a, I've got it tracked here for the whole game. We're doing pretty well. Um, again, like I've got you know, four and a half thousand experience, basically, but you can, uh, I'm, I'm up over 2,000 total, uh, for the bonus XP, which would put me up, up over Dahaka. Like, if you count the amount of XP that I've got just from getting camps, I'm up over their solo lane. And I won't count the experience that we're getting from bosses, because I feel like that's something we're doing as a team, it's not something that I did myself. Also, the camp that I took before, the um, the night camp that I took before, Bruisers, is pushing in middle. So while this is happening, they have to make a choice, right? They have to choose whether or not to defend it or to come fight us. We got the last right to kill. We cleaned up. Now we're going to go straight to their uh, straight to their Bruisers. Or their siege, sorry. They're going to have to worry about boss. Now they'll have to worry about boss and the bruisers. This is free, basically. The If anything, I didn't need my team to help me. I could have just done it by myself. They could have continued pushing. One of the neat things about Malthale, um, it's an advantage and a disadvantage in a sense. The, the disadvantage is that he really can't push. He does no PvE damage. He doesn't um, He doesn't deal damage to, to structures. Uh, he doesn't uh, you know, push exceptionally well. Uh, so I'm no good in a push. That, that's kind of a disadvantage, but it's an advantage in the sense that, like, well, it frees you up to do all the other things. Like, you can say, like, okay, well, I don't push, so I'll do this instead. So this gets a little sketchy. Um, I think I see Orphea come into the, yeah, come into the middle lane there. And if you watch the map, you got to always be watching what's, what's happening. She does kind of look up toward me, and I assume she's invading. Uh, but she doesn't. She doesn't actually. She just wanted to, to clear instead. See, the thing is, like, they should know where I'm gonna be, and and maybe they do. Um, it's hard to say, right? Like, it's hard to say if they know where I am or if they still have no idea. <laughs> um, but it should be obvious. Like, I'm I'm on the camp, right? Uh, but you just create so much pressure and you create so much of a talent advantage that there becomes a point where they can't do anything but just defend. You know, they, they're down on levels, they can't really contest objectives, um, they can't really do anything but soak out and try to try to catch back up to you. And you can't really, they can't go do anything because you've got somebody, you have mercs pushing every lane. Uh, so we have 16 here, we're two levels up, we decide we're just going to go ahead and push the keep. And we're going to get the pick off on Hanzo, right? So basically just as soon as you get the stun, I last rides and he's dead. We lose the Muradin, but overall it's it, it works. Like they've got two they've got two heroes down, and we take the keep. Dahaka would be the only one that could get to that objective before us, and it, it's just unlikely that he's gonna spawn and dig straight up there. Yep, the other team looking like, you know, they just need to get 16 before they can do anything. So this is a free objective for us. I'll go ahead and take our easy camp and then rotate to our hard camp.
So we'll have two additional camps. <clears throat> and plus, we still have our talent advantage. And if you've been watching, I think uh, the count for the other team is they've taken one camp this game. They took their easy camp um, after the first objective, maybe. Okay, now you can be pretty reasonably certain um, at this point. Here's so here's the other thing about. I'm gonna pause it for a second. Here's the other thing you can think about when you when you play like this, right? You've taken so much on the map. Okay, we don't see them here. We don't see them through here. We don't see them here. Where 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 are they? Right? They could either be here or here. Um, right? You just limited. You've limited the amount of things on the map that they are capable of doing. So. In a sense, you've given yourself a vision advantage because, like, you don't have to guess where they're going to be. They're in one of two places. They're either on the boss, which is unlikely, uh, just given that their position in the game, uh, and the other the other thing is, well, they're on siege, which is, you know, that's going to be exactly where they are. So at this point, we want okay. At this point, we're looking for a bush gank, but as soon as Orfea shows here, we know we can score the pick, right? We're going to have Muradin jump in, Stunner, get the knockback, and then I just blow her up with last rights, and that's going to be... that's going to force the uh, the other team to back off. This is the last good fight they're going to get before 20. Okay, and there she goes. So we're two levels up, we have Merc pressure in lanes, uh, they can't contest the objective 4v5, we can take the objective and we can take boss and we can pretty much win off of this. So they have Merc Pressure top, they have Merc Pressure mid, uh, it's a curse, now they have boss. Uh, Antaeus again calls for a pick on the Deckard. He's got him dead to rights here. He just has to land the stun. He does. I get there. Last rights. He's dead. And again, this probably seems greedy, you know what I mean? It's like, well, why are you taking a camp during, like, a GG push? Well, the thing is, like, again, like, I don't do... What am I going to do? There are already two heroes down. So we have nobody down. They have a boss. They have uh, mercs in every lane, basically. They're getting a lot of pressure. This is just free, you know? I want to pause just for a minute and I want to talk about XP. This is basically the end of the game, right? So it's th it says I have 6,100 experience. I've tabulated throughout the match how much I've gained from, exp from uh, taking mercs. And it's 5,133 experience, right? So that would put me at uh, whatever it is. It's a lot, right? <laughs> well, it's uh, 5.1, so I'm at uh, 11 point three something like that because math um 11 11 three puts me higher than their dahaka right um it puts me higher than anybody else on the whole team it puts me higher higher than anybody in the game and higher than their solo lane and if you think about okay well what what did i also accomplish like i out soaked their solo lane by not being in a lane i created a ton of pressure throughout the whole game and uh yeah what i don't know what else you want <laughs> that's that's basically the uh the secret right um the, the minions and mercenaries or mercenaries are just so extremely valuable right now um i know this seems like a really weird like sort of rat dota kind of way to play the game but um if you're leveraging mercs effectively you kind of open up this secret fourth lane of xp like i was talking about so um hopefully this kind of gives some insight into um the reason that's so effective. I know we've been talking about it a lot on the forums lately, um, and so hopefully this is more illustrative of uh, kind of what that's all about.
So, alright, cool, man. I'm just gonna finish this out here. Alright, and that's that. Have a look here. Yeah, I mean, if you look at their team, like, they, they basically can't... They basically were able to do nothing. And these are not bad players, right? I mean, Enigmatic's a Grandmaster player. Cold Cake, I believe, is a Masters level player. Uh, they're a four stack with Orfea is their, uh, their, uh, their pickup. But... This is a fairly high-ranked team league match. Um, they ended up kind of being a stomp, and it, it's not like it's not like we outplayed them necessarily. I mean, they're very strong players. It was just that uh, you know we made good calls, and we I think most importantly, like just leveraged the map. Like you look at the map, like it's it's just blue. They have they take they took two mercs the whole game. We took 13, 14, um, and it ends up being just an enormous XP advantage. So, yeah, hopefully uh, this uh, helped you guys <clears throat> sort of learn more about Malthale. All right, thanks a lot.